Airway examination. Why is it necessary to do an airway examination? Although we should always be prepared for potential difficulty with airway management, the ability to predict difficult airway in advance is obviously desirable. It helps with optimal patient preparation, proper selection of equipment and technique. There are various components of airway examination, which we will look at one by one. For proper mask ventilation, factors such as presence of beard or elderly edentulous patient, obese patient and those with gross face or neck abnormalities or mask may interfere with obtaining a proper mask seal and hence ventilation. For example, the patient here has beard which may interfere with mask ventilation. However, his mandible, neck, teeth seem to be normal on inspection. Certain group indices are given to remember the points for predicting difficult bag and mask ventilation such as the mnemonic bones, beard, obesity or obstruction, no teeth, elderly, stiff lungs and snorters. Next, for tracheal intubation, factors that may pose a difficulty like presence of buck teeth, receding mandible, masses limiting neck movement, thick neck are to be observed on inspection. Presence of long upper incisor will also cause difficulty during laryngoscopy. Cervical and atlanto occipital joint movements. To obtain the ideal sniffing position, that is flexion at cervical and extension at the atlanto-occipital joint, which helps align the oral, pharyngeal and tracheal axes, neck movement should be normal. Flexion of around 25 to 35 degrees at the neck and extension of 80 to 85 degrees at the atlanto-occipital joint makes the laryngoscopic view easier. Patient here is instructed to try to touch his chin to his chest and to look up at the ceiling without raising his eyebrows as far as he can. Also, lateral rotation of 70 to 75 degrees is desirable. To assess the neck movements, Dillilkin's test can also be used. For this, the head is held in neutral position. One of the index finger of the examiner is placed at the patient's occipital protuberance and the other at the tip of the jaw. Patient is now asked to look at the ceiling. If the finger at the occiput is lower than that at the chin, extension is normal. An indirect method for stiff joint assessment is with prayer sign and palm print test. The hypothesis that the joint rigidity seen in diabetic patients due to tissue glycosylation may also involve laryngeal and cervical joints, leading difficulty laryngoscopy. Such patients would not be able to approximate their palms due to limited mobility at the interphalangeal joints. As you can see, the patient here has no such issues. Assessment of the temporomandibular joint Mouth opening involves two functions of the temporomandibular joint, rotation of the condyle in the synovial cavity and forward displacement of the condyle. To assess this, examiner's finger is placed in front of the tragus and thumb in front of the lower part of the mastoid and patient is asked to open his mouth wide. As the condyle of the mandible slides forward, the index finger can be indented in this space. Another test for temporomandibular joint function is mouth opening. Patient is asked to open his mouth as wide as possible and the interincisor distance is measured. Distance of less than 3 cm would suggest possible difficulty in laryngoscopy. This can also be roughly assessed by the ability to place number of fingers in between the upper and lower incisors. Less than 2 fingers would suggest inadequate mouth opening. Calder test is done to assess the ability to protrude the mandible. Patient is asked to protrude the mandible as far as possible. If the lower incisor lie anterior to the upper incisor, this would suggest possible easy intubation.
assessment of the mandible and the submandibular space. The normal relation of the upper and the lower incisor is important as an overbite would point towards reduced submandibular space. Laryngoscopy will push the tongue into the space and if reduced or narrowed, exposure of the glottis may be inadequate. Space anterior to the larynx can be expressed by various measured distances such as the thyromental distance. This is the distance between the thyroid notch and the mental symphysis with neck fully extended and mouth closed. Distance of more than 6 cm would be considered as normal. In this patient, the thyromental distance is well above 6.5 cm. Similarly, the hyomental distance is measured between the mentum and the hyoid bone, which can be assessed with finger breadths as well. The length of the mandible alone does not have much predictive value. However, a horizontal length of the mandible of at least 9 cm suggests easy intubation. Also, the compliance of the submandibular space should be assessed. Now to assess the adequacy of the oropharynx, palate assessment and malampati grading is done. Malampati grading is one of the most commonly employed tests. It indicates the amount of space within the oral cavity to accommodate the laryngoscope and the endotracheal tube simultaneously. The grades are associated with the laryngoscopic view of the glottis as well. This is performed by having the patient open their mouth as wide as possible and stick out their tongue without phonation. Assessment is done with patient in sitting position and at observer's eye level. The degree to which the fascial pillars, uvula, soft and hard palate are visible are graded. Assessment of the palate for narrowness is also done simultaneously. Here in this patient, the palate and MPG are seen. It is said as malampati grade 1 when the fascial pillars, uvula, soft and hard palate are seen, grade 2 when base of the uvula, soft palate and hard palate are visualized, grade 3 when the soft and hard palate are visible, and grade 4 when only the hard palate is visible. The patient here has malampati grade 2. Assessment for quality of glottic viewing during laryngoscopy. Awake direct laryngoscopy can be done with adequate sedation and topicalization of the tongue and the pharynx to have an estimate of the forthcoming laryngoscopy and intubation. There are four grades of cormac lehan grading. Grade 1 when the entire vocal cords are visible. Grade 2 when the posterior parts of the laryngeal aperture is visible. Grade 3 when only the epiglottis is visible and grade 4 when none of the glottic structures are visible. And according to Cook's modified laryngoscopic view of Cormac and Lehan grading, grade 2 and grade 3 are further subdivided. In 2a, the posterior commissure and the posterior parts of the vocal cords are visible. 2b, only the erythronoids are visible. 3a, epiglottis is visible and is liftable as well. And 3b, epiglottis is visible but is not liftable. The patient here has CL grade 1. Also, there are other scoring systems for assessing the, the glottic view such as percentage of glottic opening score and ease of intubation grading. Upper lip bite test. Upper lip bite test is used to assess the range and freedom of mandible movement. It is said as class 1 when the lower incisor can bite the upper lip above the vermilion line, class 2 when the lower incisor can bite the upper lip below the vermilion line, and class 3 when the lower incisor cannot bite the lip. The patient here belongs to class 1. Sternomental distance. This distance is measured between the sternal notch and the tip of the chin with head in full extension and with mouth closed. Distance of less than or equal to 12.5 cm are associated with difficult intubation. Using group indices, that is multiple parameters, enhance the sensitivity of predicting difficulty laryngoscopy and intubation. 
Benomov's 11 parameter analysis is a stepwise airway examination that follows the line of sight from the upper incisor to the glottis. Four steps focus on teeth, which are interincisor gap, presence of buck tooth, length of upper incisor, and mandible protrusion. Two for inside the mouth, which are molympati grading and palate configuration. Two for the mandibular space, which are mandibular space compliance and the thyromental distance. Three steps in neck examination, which are neck length, neck thickness, and head and neck movements. Wilson's risk score analyzes five parameters, the weight, head and neck movements, jaw movement, presence of receding mandible, and presence of buck teeth. And scores of 0, 1, and 2 are given. On the basis of their sum, ease of laryngoscopy and intubation can be made out. El Ganzori risk index is based on evaluation of mouth opening, thyromental distance, malampati grading, neck movement, ability to protrude the lower jaw, body weight, history of difficult intubation, and are scored 0, 1, and 2. Patient with score of more than 7 signifies possible difficulty laryngoscopy. Another group index is the mnemonic LEMON, which stands as follows. L for look externally for features suggestive of potential difficulties. E for examine the airway anatomy by 332 law. M for MPG grading. O for obstruction of the airway. And N for neck mobility. The 332 law are as follows. Assessing the oral opening by being able to accommodate three fingers. Measure the ability of mandible to accommodate the tongue by having three finger breadth distance between mentum and the hyoid bone. And externally assess for a high larynx by being able to get two fingers between the top of the thyroid cartilage and the floor of the mouth. Grouped indices for placement of supraglottic airway devices are given as the mnemonic rods, that is, restricted mouth opening, obstruction of upper airway, disrupted or distorted airway, and stiff lungs. And that for surgical airway access is given as mnemonic short, surgery, presence of hematoma or bleeding, obesity, radiation, and tumor. Quick word on pediatric airway assessment. There are various differences between a pediatric airway and that of an adult. The tongue is larger in proportion to the oral cavity in a pediatric patient. The epiglottis is narrower, U-shaped and flops posteriorly. The larynx is placed high and anterior at the level of C3, C4. The cricoid is more conically shaped in infants, narrowest at the cricoid ring. The trachea deviate, deviates posteriorly and downwards and becomes anatomically similar to adult between the age of 8 to 10 years. The head is large and have a short neck and prominent occiput. To align the oral, pharyngeal and tracheal axes, use of a shoulder roll instead of neck flexion may be necessary, especially in infants and young children, due to presence of a larger head and high and anterior larynx. Due to lack of cooperation of patient, the airway examination may be difficult in small children but should be done whenever possible.